If you've been watching the news lately, you probably realize that almost every billionaire, analyst, and economist has warned us that a financial crisis is around the corner. From Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway is sitting on a $168 billion in cash as of recording this video, to Michael Burry, who's betting $1.6 billion that the stock market will crash. And Barry Stern, predicting an economic hurricane. It's not surprising that about 70% of Americans think that there's a recession around the corner. So if a recession hits, it's not just about economic that takes the hit. We are talking about wave of job losses, fewer job opportunities, and less money in our pocket. Sure, recession comes with a lot of problems, but it does offer some ways to build wealth. I'm going to discuss 10 surefire ways to cash in during the 2024 recession. During the recession of 2008 and 2009, which was the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression, it shook the very core foundation of even the biggest sharks of Wall Street. Millions of people lost their jobs and homes, unemployment almost doubled to 10%, and poverty rates plummeted to a record high of 15%. Even the stock market crashed, with the S&P 500 down to 57% from its high. This catastrophic recession is again trying to take hold of the US economy. Sure, recession comes with a lot of problems, but it does offer some ways to build wealth. As legendary investor Nathan Rao says, buy when there's blood on the street. You and I may get hit recession in a different way, where the basic needs of ours to live our life may be under financial stress. But it's during the recession when the world's riches gets more richer. So if you play your cards right in the next recession, you may come out being elite when the things get better. However, US inflation is slowing down, nearing Fed's 2% target rate, so some analysts are talking about a soft landing, where the economy gently eases into a crisis. Sounds nice, right? But not everyone's buying it. Most experts are waving the red flag, warning us, about a potential hard landing straight into a recession. The net savings as a percentage of gross national income has dipped into negative territory, which has historically preceded a severe recession. Then there comes the delayed impact of those Fed rate ties during the COVID time and whatnot, and tighter fiscal policies, throwing more hurdles on our way. So get ready to take some notes because I'm going to discuss 10 surefire ways to cash in during the 2024 recession. But stick around till the end because by the end of this video, I'm going to cover what's something that you should never do during a recession and by doing that, no matter whichever ways that you try to build your wealth, it's not gonna work out. When Berkshire Hathaway sold up their stocks and then Warren Buffett invested $29 billion in short-term US Treasury bills, everyone was shocked because of Oracle of Omaha himself is against investing long-term bonds. Well, knowing Buffett's prudent approach, it's likely he sees it as a smart move to wait for the right buying opportunity while earning some returns. As I said, he's sitting on $168 billion in cash. During uncertain times, like recession, government bonds are often seen as a safe heaven. Investors flock to them, driving up the demand and prices. This leads to a higher return for bondholders as they can sell them at a premium when needed. If you want to follow Buffett's leads in managing risk, keeping cash handy, and maximizing return during uncertain times, government bonds might just be the best bet. If you want me to make a video on which securities he may buy during a recession with $168 billion that he's sitting on, let me know in the comment section below. Now, I know what you're thinking. When the recession hits, stocks drop, and yes, this is the best time to purchase stock. Grandpa Buffett once said that it's wise for investors to be fearful when everyone else is greedy and be greedy when everyone else is fearful. When people tighten their wallets, businesses see lower earnings and investors start to panic. Some even panic sell their stocks either out of fear or because they need cash. If a stock drops 20%, it means that the stock is now 20% cheaper. So if you're buying a stock and hold it until the growth resumes, imagine how profitable it can be. Sure, it may seem risky, but as I've told you before, history shows that the market always bounces back post-recession. In 2008 recession, General Motors and Chrysler went bankrupt and sought help from other big stable companies to stay afloat. So when you're considering investing your money, it's smart to choose businesses with some extra money saved. Take the example of companies like Apple and Microsoft. They always keep a lot of cash handy just in case. Even when the prices go up, they're okay with some of their money losing value because of the rising prices. They would rather do that than risk not having enough money to keep going during a recession. You can find out how much money a company has by looking at their financial report, especially the balance sheet. And for this next ideal scenario, you must look into dividend stocks in consumer staples. You might ask why? because products from these sectors are considered last on the chopping block when families adjust their budget during a recession. This sector is known as FMCG, or fast-moving consumer goods, which is a key contributor in a country's economic and GDP growth. Product from these sectors basically all about those everyday things we use at home. 
like cleaning stuff, laundry soap, box spray, and all those essential items. Now, why does that matter? Well, it's a huge deal for jobs. I'm talking about millions of people getting work because of this sector. There are jobs in making this stuff, getting it to the store, selling it, and promoting it. US gross GDP's 5.5% is contributed through agriculture, food, and related industry, and provided 10.4% of the US employment. On average, 12.8% of American household budgets go towards food expenses. So investing in these companies like Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, Congra, and Walmart can be a best bet. Also, the historical data supports that the outperformance of these companies compared to the broader market, such as the S&P 500 during a recession. Another good thing about these companies are the mutual fund dedicated solely to investing in consumer staple companies, like the Fidelity Select Consumer Staple Portfolio. It's for companies involved in manufacturing, selling, and distributing consumer staples. If that's not it, you may go with a startup. Surprise? Thinking about a startup during a recession, does that even make sense? Yes, it does. In tough economic times, established companies face challenges, opening the doors for startups to thrive. Take WhatsApp or Uber, born in the 2009 recession and now valued at billions. Even Airbnb was founded during 2008 recession when founders Brian Chesky and Joe Gabia were struggling to pay rent. There are plenty of other examples like that. So starting a business during the economic crisis can be a profitable move. And one more profitable startup investment would be to subscribe to this channel. Those of you who don't know me, I'm an Mr. Streamer, I'm a realtor and a diversified investor, and you are here for your dose of entertainment. Now, have you ever noticed how a recession creates a certain chain reaction? It hits business revenues, which messes up with the job stability, then GDP, then inflation, and so on and so forth. But guess what? That stays immune to this domino effect. According to the global management firm Schroeder's, gold beats the S&P 500 by 37% during a recession. Plus, it's a top hedge against inflation, thanks to its history as a stable asset during economic turmoil or inflation risks. Investors flock to gold to safeguard their wealth because unlike currencies that can depreciate, gold holds its value, making it attractive during recession or when inflation looms. But that doesn't mean you should swipe your credit card or borrow money to buy gold. If you've been considering that, the next point is for you. Avoid getting into debt, especially if you're not ready for tough times. Many folks end up in debt when they can't cover their basic needs. During a recession triggered by a financial bubble or inflation, the Fed typically raises interest rate to ease the bubble, making debt more expensive. For example, in the housing bubble of 2007, Fed hiked rates to 5.25%. Similarly, if you remember the dot-com bubble of 2000, the interest rate went up to 6.5% during that crisis. It's a good idea to stay liquid during this time, especially during the tough times. And another good idea is to leave a like below for this channel to let the YouTube algorithm know that you're liking this video. Now, yes, I've said earlier to invest in stock, but it doesn't mean you just drain your bank account and buy stocks. You must have three to six months worth of living expenses stashed away as emergency fund. If you don't have cash, you'll end up in debt, making things even worse for you and your family. And I've already warned you about the interest can kill you. Well, skipping on an extravagant coffee or pair of shoes for a recession monster that's not in front of you, it's kind of hard. I, I can feel your pain. But financial stability isn't about being an expert. It's about being wise with your money, especially in tough times like recession. Don't get me wrong, I'm no financial expert. As a matter of fact, my financial knowledge is mostly through the mistake that I've made. And I also don't mean to deprive yourself from everything. It's just being smart with your money and how you spend it. If you want to help you with cutting down expenses, don't miss out on things that you should never waste your money on, which you can find it somewhere right here. Besides cutting down your expenses, you can also start increasing your income. Now, how's that possible if you're, there's job losses and economic downturn during a recession? Hear me out. If an economic downturn hits into 2024, companies will likely tighten their belts and cut costs. And unfortunately, that often means layoffs. To avoid being caught in the crossfire, you've got two options. Either enhance your skills to demonstrate your value to the company or boost your earning potential by starting a side hustle. That can bring you some serious cash, especially passively. And what's better than getting into gig economy for that? Not only will this provide you with some extra income to stash away in savings to pay off your debt, but it will also serve you as a safety net if you lose your main job. Now let's talk about something that you should never do during a recession. Do not constantly check your portfolio. When things are going well in the economy and in the stock market is fluctuating and the stock market is fluctuating, it's natural to log into your brokerage account and keep tabs on your investment. But if you're in investing during a recession, you've got to break that habit. Checking your portfolio too often can lead you to unnecessary stress and anxiety. And when you're stressed, 
You might panic and sell, fearing doomsday. Relax. If it's the apocalypse, your money won't save you anyways. Those who became richer either sold before or held on until the song passed. So if you can't resist checking your portfolio during the recession, either buy bonds or gold. Now remember, I mentioned earlier that you should never go on debt to buy gold or any other asset. However, as of the third quarter of 2023, you and I collectively have $17.1 trillion in debt. So does that mean if the recession hits and the inflation rises, or if the dollar dies, our debt gets wiped off? Find out in this video. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, thank you for hanging out with me. See you in the next video.